Hello everybody, and welcome back to Aurora 4X. I, of course, am Sir Beardian, and today we are going to be moving on with our um, colonization of Seoul. Um, before we do, just in case, because this is probably going to be mainly an episode of actually just making progress, I figured I might as well just touch on wealth before we get stuck into it. Now, um, wealth is a s relatively simple concept uh, in the game at the end of the day. Um, and it doesn't have very much impact until it has all the impact. So, really straightforward. Um, population per capita income and racial per capita income. That's basically how much income each individual uh, person makes. Uh, multiplied by the population and you have your annual wealth creation. Um, <clears throat> now I'm not sure what the capital, capital is. 2600 divided by 20. Hang on, what's... 600 times 20. Yeah, okay. So it's just a straight multiplication. So each mid, so each per million people. So that's how much, how much wealth uh, each million population makes per year. Fairly straightforward. So 12,000. Um, annual racial wealth is how much wealth you make across your entire, um, all your populations. Obviously, this is equal to, to Australia because that's all we have. Once we have more populated colonies, this will be higher. Uh, and of course, it grows as your population grows. Um, racial per capita income and population per capita income. Now, um, each population will has a wealth multiplier. So this can be higher or lower than your racial. Racial is what you get from your technology, uh, which is the civilian economy by 20%. Um, so that increases your wealth. Uh, and of course, trade. Um, this is your income summary. Um, tax and population. Currently, all of our wealth comes from tax and population. Um, and as you can see, 12,000 12, equals 1,000 per month. Um, so 100% of our people income comes from populations. Uh, income can also come from things like uh, taxing trade from your civilians uh, and from selling um, material minerals from uh, commercial mining colonies. Um, expenditures, basically everything you do uh, expends wealth. So construction from your industry, research labs cost wealth, ground unit maintenance costs wealth, um, buying minerals from um, commercial colonies costs wealth so there's a lot of stuff that will cost you wealth and as long as this number is greater than this number you're all set um trade goods is what the civilians do um so each planet based on its population produces a certain number of uh, a certain number of certain goods and these goods, you can't actually do anything with them yourself. They're entirely used by civilians. Um, so you have annual production and annual shortfall. And it's actually kind of unusual that um, the colony makes a little bit of everything. Um, however, you can see that there is an actual shortfall. Um, yeah, so there, you have shortfalls and you have surpluses. And colonies will usually have on a, a limited number of surplus um, goods that they produce, and ultimately they want the to receive goods to cancel out their annual shortfall. And civil so civilians will go to a planet that has a surplus, and they will take it to a planet that has shortfall, and that transport will generate a little bit of wealth, uh, both for the oh, that, one, that one, both for the um, shipping line and as tax for yourself. Uh, import requirement is how much they actually want. So you'll go from that to that, fairly straightforward, or from that to that. Um, now there is one, there are two particular goods here that are not usual. So ancient artifacts is one. Um, the only planets that can produce ancient artifacts are ones that have or had ruins. Um, <clears throat> or possibly conquered empires, I'm not really sure. But 
um, a standard colony will never be able to produce ancient artifacts unless there is an somewhere to actually source them from. Um, so you want to so you want to settle pl planets that have ruins so that they can produce uh, artifacts. Hopefully, um, the other one is this one infrastructure. Um, this infrastructure is exactly the same thing as this infrastructure, right? Except that it's free. However, there is only one way to get at this infrastructure. Two ways. The first one is if the planet that is producing the infrastructure does not actually needs it. So if it needs um, to produce infrastructure to get uh, more room for its population, it will build this infrastructure straight into itself. Okay, that's method number one. <clears throat> method number two is for civilians to come and collect this infrastructure, which is surplus, and transport it to a colony that needs infrastructure to make room for its pop growing population. And then when they deposit it, it gets deposited as actual infrastructure, which you can then use. Um, so it this particular infrastructure is extremely important when you're uh, beginning to colonize because this will literally give you free infrastructure if you have civilians with freighters. Um, so that is extremely useful. So now that we've gone over a, a little something a little bit educational, let's get stuck into actual gameplay, making some actual progress. We have our surveyor, which is out in the uh, Kuiper belt and making his way around surveying things and finding stuff for us. I'll just switch to five days and I'll turn on this so we can see what's happening. <clears throat> cycle, cycle, cycle. We are of course waiting for production. Oh, we lost our operations guy as well. <clears throat> Bloody hell. What with all the accidents? losing people all over the place. <clears throat> okay. Okay, construction rate 12 is done. Our construction is now 6,500. That's gone up by 20%, which is awesome. Uh, construction factories are now slated to be, to be completed in April of year 12. So about three years. Uh, mass driver is done in February, so about a month. Um, now, we need a few things before we start work on uh, any other uh, generic technologies. <clears throat> First of all, we need to we need to get some basic technologies for designs. So, we need active grav active grav sensor strength. Do we have a sensor guy? Yes, we do. He doesn't have a bonus, so he's worthless. Okay, we'll come back to sensors. Uh, power and propulsion, we want... We'll come back to it. What do we need? We need... Don't need guns just yet. We need... Maintenance store. Okay, we need cargo handling system. We need that. Cargo handling system, we need <coughs> maintenance storage. We need cryogenic transport. We need large fuel. We need improved command and control. Mm, that's a little bit expensive. Um, Orbital Hub is also going to be a little bit more expensive. So, okay, we're just going to stick with these for now. <clears throat> um, it's not going to take too long for them to get out, so that's fine. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, shipyard has been modified. We have added another thousand tons. We'll add a thousand more. <clears throat> I'm 
my mass driver is almost done and done. There we go. Okay, so we have some mass drivers now. <coughs> um, we are going to get 10% onto labs, kick them in. Good. Um, so it's going to take, at the moment, it's going to take 64 years. So that's obviously way too long. Uh, but the construction factories will will kick that up, and when we get um, when the shipyards gets done, that should be shifting down as well. So um, we're only just going to slowly start trickling in labs for the time being because we're focusing on the other stuff that we don't necessarily have to build any more of later. Um, Eighty two hundred tons maintenance. Yep, that's doing fine. Uh, so we are at forty. We're going to get another 60. So that should get us around 20,000. <clears> Let's keep going. All right, that's going to take a while. How's our research doing? Halfway there. Ah, shipyard's done. We'll uh, throw another 10,000 on there. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Let's get that research done for cargo handling. Patrick Daly just ranked up. Ooh, he's even better now. Beautiful. Okay, so cargo handling system is done. <clears throat> um... Actually, we won't need this just yet. Because uh, I won't need that, really need that until military. What we do need is cryo and fuel. We'll get the fuel first. And then the cryo. Yeah, that's fine for now. Okay, so cargo kind of handling is done. I do want that fuel tank before we could build our freighter, which it looks like we might actually end up doing this from this uh, episode. Let's get that extra thousand. I want to get this up to about twelve at the moment. <clears throat> Let's keep going. I'll just shift this there so we can read stuff that trickles in. How's our industry doing? <coughs> oh, we have a shipyard. <coughs> we have one more shipyard. Let's get started on another 10,000 tons. There we go. Let's keep going. Fuel is almost done. Done. Okay. Now, let's go and build ourselves a freighter. There we go. Now, commercial ships, of course, need three months of deployment time, so that's fine. We are now going to go and put in a cargo hold. Standard. Um, most facilities are 25,000 cargo capacity, so... Um, you want at least a standard one for anything that's going to be moving facilities around. Um, small would be for little shuttles. Uh, they don't necessarily need too much of. Okay, commercial engine. We'll get two for a little bit more speed, and we are going to shift fuel storage into a large. Okay, that looks pretty good. 50 billion kilometers is good for a round trip to almost anywhere. It's very slow, but that's fine. Um, and it's 33,000 tons, which is not super expense, excess, excessive. Uh, build time is only 0.63 years. Um, engines we can prefab, which are going to reduce cost by uh, 20%, which is not too bad. Um, 
But, how, but if I have a look down here, you'll notice that the load time is 10 hours and 10 days. And that's the standard load time for a standard cargo bay. If we were to double the cargo bays, it would double the loading time. Fairly straightforward. Um, the cargo handling system, as you can see, reduces that to two days, which is pretty good for a freighter. Um, if we stick another one, <clears throat> which not, and they're not that expensive, they're not that big or expensive, right? Um, that cuts it down to a one day, one hour. That's reasonable. Um, a third one will will cut it down to sixteen hours, but considering how slow it is, the turnaround time is hardly even worth uh, bothering about too much. Uh, even two days might be enough, but the um, but it's not really worth the um, uh, the the one extra the one extra day isn't really worth it. <clears throat> um, actually. No, we're tiny. No, two is fine. Okay, um, the armor is really, really killing us here. Um, we should probably get armor. Um, I'm going to get armor as soon as we get um, the um, cryo base, I think. Because that 43 is just huge. Um, it's half the, half the size of our engines, right? It's, it's a quarter of the cost of, our sh of the ship. Right, so it's super expensive as well, um, even if the tonnage isn't high. But if we can reduce the tonnage, that would make life a lot easier as well, you know. Okay, so uh, we're going to finish off cryo, and then we will do uh, armor. Okay, shipyard modified, done, that's our military. Like I said, I want to get up to about 12, so we'll keep going on that. <clears throat> okay, 3rd of June 11 is where we're going to end up. <clears throat> uh, commercial shipyard it will be done in November as well. Okay, another shipyard is done. Uh, we'll put another ten. It'll be it'll be more than what we actually need for the freighters, but we're gonna get bigger stuff anyway, so that's fine. Okay, cryo is almost done. Done. There we go. Okay, so that's cryo. Uh, last thing we want is duranium armor. It's super cheap. So we're just going to stick our best guy on it. There we go. Uh, you can see how big the difference is between the, the amount of research points. So uh, Patrick, who was doing the who has a twenty percent bonus, was producing about twenty one hundred, while Stephanie, which has a thirty percent bonus, is producing fifteen hundred. So that's a pretty big drop. Okay, but still, thirtieth um, uh, end of September is what we're aiming for. So that's fine. Um, now, what I want to do is I just want to double check. Yeah, we need we need officers. Let's go have a look at our officers. See if we manage to pick up anybody um, to staff our. You know, the highest we have is a captain. Uh, I, now Isaac isn't. Uh, it's enough. Isaac will give us a mining bonus, fighter ops, and intelligence bonus. Not really too much. The crew training rating is also pathetic as well. How about John? Well, he's got the same crew training rating. There's a survey bonus, but that's not really too useful for us either. So there's basically nothing here that's actually useful. So we're just going to stick Isaac in there because why the hell not? Okay, and now we can get everybody else, which will give us bonuses. Civilian demonstrators, do we actually have somebody? Yeah, okay, we have Emma Humphreys in there. Um... Construction, construction, factory production. Do we have anybody with a better factory production? John Wilkinson. So, she's got a mining bonus and a pop growth bonus, but otherwise nothing really too useful for us. Uh, John is an A1, so he can't do it. Mitchell has factory, wealth, mining, population, and xenology. How do we compare... The mining bonus is a little bit lower. It's been around for 10 years. 
So his we started with this guy. Hmm. Yeah, no, nah, still not worth it. <coughs> okay. Let's go get our armor tech. Ah, shipyard's done. Stick another thousand. Almost. Almost. There we are. Okay. So now we have to learn something new. Armor. Okay. So the way armor works in Aurora. Okay. Um, based on the ship size, so 670, uh, you get an exact class size. Now, the exact class size is around, uh, is what determines your tonnage. It's rounded up to the nearest 50 uh, for any ship that's not a fighter size. Uh, fighters are not rounded uh, at all. You get the exact class size in tonnage, um, which is why fighters can be in the like 75 ton range, while um, anything above a fighter is always a multiple of 50. Um, so you get the class size. Um, through annoying and complicated math, you get the armor area, which is here. Um, armor area is divided by four to get the armor strength. So you get 92.6. Um, and I believe, I'm not sure exactly what the math is. I don't believe it's a straight one-to-one, -one, but you also get your armor columns. Um, armor columns are essentially how many squares wide a ship's armor is. And I'll show you that what I mean here. So if we go to our armor status, this is our armor, right? So we have how, how many columns? 24 columns, so 24 wide, and then a layer of one, so one deep. So if it was too deep, it there will be another row of squares here. And incoming attacks will hit a random column and then um, distribute their damage based on their damage profile. Um, and then that will slowly chew its way down. Once it reaches the bottom, that's your hull. So that's your internals. So you don't want to run out of those. So as you can see, so the question then becomes, uh, what, is, what will be better armored? Um, this freighter or this surveyor. Well, obviously the freighter is gonna be better armored because it has 92 columns. So inherently any hit that comes in is going to hit, is going to be more likely to be absorbed by armor. Now, obviously armor penetration comes into play, which, and which means that against something that penetrates armor, they're about evenly protected. Um, however, against something that like, against if you add multiple layers, then it, the balance is going to shift towards a surveyor because while the freighter, um, the, so the freighter, if, if, so if, if you were to put more art, more layers on the Mark Aronson until they have the same armor, until they have the same total um, armor, the freighter will be more resistant to low penetration hits because each hit is going to be more likely to hit hit actual armor compared to hitting no armor at all. Um, whereas the Mark Aronson would be more resilient to penetrating hits, where each hit would penetrate that layer easily anyway, but then would have to tunnel through those extra layers um, on, the, on the surveyor compared to the freighter where it only has that one layer of armor and all the penetrating damage goes through anyway, no matter where it hits. Um, so you have the columns there and then you have, uh, and then you determine how many la how many uh, layers you want of those columns. Uh, obviously, as you add more armor, the amount of columns goes up because the size goes up. But um, essentially, that's how you get your armor and how it actually uh, works. Um, how much your armor weighs is dependent on the uh, armor strength by the strength of your armor. So 
As it is, our freighter requires an armor strength of 92.6 for the first layer of armor. Although this is more for the second, I believe. But anyway, but it's about 92.6. So the armor rating of one requires 92.6. And as I talked, as I mentioned earlier, conventional armor has a strength of two. So we need uh, one conventional armor for every two points of armor strength, which is why we get 46.3 compared to 92.6. Now, the Duranium armor that we just researched has an armor strength, armor rating of five. So we should end up with one fifth of our armor rating. They're about the same uh, in terms of uh, tonnage per hull size, but the amount of hull size that we reduce is going to go down significantly by more than half actually, because you're going up from two to five uh, and five is two and a half times two. Yes. Um, so this should go down by to about 30, 40% of what this is. So let's see how much we get. So 3350 tons at 46.3 and 373. Uh, we'll just get a notepad there. So we have 33,500 tons. We have 373 kilometers a second. We have 46.3 armor. And we have 92 columns. Let's see what happens when we use our new armor. So we have gone to 32,100. So we have saved 1,400 tons off of our ship. That weight reduction has, uh, has resulted in an increase from 373 to 389, which is about 16 kilometers a second, which is not insignificant when you're only doing less than 400 kilometers a second. Um, we have lost a little bit of uh, a few columns, so it's gone down from 92 to 89, but that's just because we've lost that tonnage. If we were to put stuff in there to get it back up to 33,500, um, it would be the same columns. And we have gone from 46.3 to 18. Um, if we now have a look, it's gone down to a quarter of the cost. Actually, that's a good question. What was the cost before? I can't remember how much, but I believe it was significantly higher in terms of cost, although the cost may have gone up um, to compare. But it is we have lo we have shaved a significant amount of actual stuff off of our ship. Um, so it's made us a little bit faster, a little bit smaller, um, and it should be significantly cheaper as well. Or at least the armor of which should be significantly cheaper. Okay, actually, we can do this. Um, so it's using conventional, 4.9, so it costs 24.4, down to 23. So not significantly cheaper, but still definitely cheaper. Still definitely cheaper. Get rid of that. <clears throat> okay. And when you have 90, so it would have gone from 90, maybe 100, down to 90. Um, and you can rewind it and see what it was before. Um, I'm not going to bother right this moment. So that is our freighter. We're going to copy it real quick, and we're going to order rename it. And we are going to strip, no, not the cargo handling systems. We're going to strip cargo hold. Actually, do we have? Yes, cryo. And we're going to put in cryo transports. Now, cryo transports are significantly smaller than a cargo hold. Um, 10 times smaller, to be exact. Uh, you also notice that cargo holds are actually completely free of mineral cost. They only cost wealth. So they, only, so they actually cost 50 wealth and nothing else. Whereas cryogenic transports cost 75 mecassium and 25 wealth. Hence the, one cost, hence the cost of 100. Um, so cryo transports are going to be, so this ship is going to be significantly more expensive. Um, you also notice that it goes from 50 to 100. So the cost is going to be significantly more expensive than our freighter if we have them the same tonnage. Um, and heck, even as is, it should be more expensive. Is it? Yeah, they're the same cost as is. 
That's a bit unusual. Is it the armor? I think it's the armor. Hang on, let's, let's compare. So, <clears throat> that one is our colony ship. <clears throat> okay. So, Darwin has... So, they have the same cost of engines. Uh, cargo hold standard costs 50. The cryo transport costs 100. How much armor are we saving? 39 down to 90. Um, so, okay. So, yeah. So, the savings in... The, so, the extra cost of the cargo hold compared to the cryo transport is made up by having less armor cost from so from 90 down to 39 um so we've gone down in cost of actual payload in terms of cargo capacity uh cost or we've gone up in cost of payload but down in cost of armor so there you go so they're they're identical cost which begs the question are they actually buildable off each other well no because while the build point cost is the same, the refit cost is significantly different. So you have, so you're removing, um, so there's a, so there's a cost in armor difference of about, what, 50, 60, 50? Um, and there is also the cost of the, um, the actual cryo transport, which is a hundred, so that's about a hundred and fifty, um, which is half the, which is almost half the cost of the entire ship. Uh, and the way this works is that you need, if you have a look, so from Darwin to Sydney costs twenty four twenty seven build points. So that's a significant difference in cost, way more than the ship, and that's because they have you have to remove the armor. Put the put the put new armor. Oh, well, have to remove the armor. Hang on, that was a smaller one. Yeah, so that one. That's, that's because you're adding cost of the um, the. So you're adding. So you're removing. So from that one to Sydney, you're removing the cry transport, adding the um, the cargo transport, and then adding the armor. And then there's also the absolutely massive tonnage difference. And that will probably mostly be from the tonnage difference. If we have a look from the Sydney to the Darwin, that's about the same. Because a lot of that is going to be coming from the tonnage difference. Because the component difference is only like 100 to 300 tops. Um, most of that is going to be the tonnage difference. Because if you have a look, the Darwin is 9,100, while the Sydney is 3,200. So there's a 20,000 ton difference between the two ships. Um, and that's a hell of a huge difference. So that's where that huge cost is coming from. Um, the question then becomes, what happened? Is the extra cost of the... Uh, can we get it up to that level? Well, if we get it up to 33,000 tons, so the ton, now the tonnage is the same, but the build point cost is absolutely huge. It were up to 1,300 build point compared to three a third, uh, compared to 300. So that's a thousand difference. So if we have a look from Sydney to Darwin, well, that's only 81. That's actually not that far, except that 81 is a huge percentage of 357. From the Darwin, ah, now that's where we. That's where it gets interesting. Darwin can um, reef uh, can. Uh, it is eligible to build the Sydney because the refit cost is 1302.5, which is almost dead on to the build point cost. So the way, so what makes it eligible is that the refit cost is about the same to the build point because you essentially, uh, essentially have the, sa the same uh, cost. So that is where the kicker is. You want your refit cost to be about the same as the build point cost, um, and you want the tonnage to be about the same. So if we tool for the Darwin, not only are we gonna have an absolutely huge colony ship that can transport 100,000 colonists, that's 0.1 of a million, um, 100,000 colonists uh, at about the same rate as our freighter, we only need one commercial yard. We don't need two. So if we tool for the Darwin, we also get the Sydney for free. So we get the tooling for the Sydney for free. Um, 
So this is what we're going to do. This is going to be good. This is good. Um, so we're going to tour for the diamond. We're going to get the Sydney for free. Uh, and that will give us uh, one, two ships for, for, per, for the shipyard. Perfect. Job's done. Uh, now, we need to wait for this to finish first so we can get our 30,000 plus capacity because at the moment we can't tool for anything that's actually worthwhile. So, uh, let's go set our research. What's the time at? 35. Let's go set our research. You know, we might as well get this thing out of the way. Oh, it's 5,000. That's expensive. Need more labs. Or more research rate. 10,000. That's too expensive. Um, defensive systems. No. Nah. Not going to do guns just yet. Logistics. You know what? We need to get this thing out done. So we'll do this first. Then we're going to go for the pebble bed. Okay. There is capacity for this one. And oh, there, there is our last commercial yard. Okay, so our three commercial yards are done. We are now starting work on the labs. We're going to jack this up to 20 to get them out faster. Oh, wait, no. What's it picked up? Oh, it's picked up the military academies. Okay, that's fine. We'll jack this up by only five. That's still going to get it out faster. I'm going to get it. We're already halfway there to one lab. We already have, we're already halfway to, to lab to our sixth lab. So that's for good. Um, so we'll get our academies up and that will hopefully help restock our um, officers who seem to be extremely derpy. But you know what? I guess we are living on Australia world. So it makes sense that our officers are dying all the time. It's not exactly the most hospitable planet. Okay, we'll jack that up. We're almost there. We'll start throwing 10,000 on there. Let's keep going. Uh, how is the Mark Harrison doing? Uh, well, we'll come back to it. Here we go. 10,000 tons. Now, which one are we doing? It's Darwin, right? Yes, we're tooling for the Darwin. Tooling for Darwin. First tool is free and instant. Done. Okay, so now we can start building freighters and colony ships. Um... Actually, we need engines. I'm gonna shift five out of. Actually, I'll shift fifteen out of this and commercial engine fifteen. Uh, we need two per ship. Let's go for. I think I want one colony ship and two freighters. So let's go for six. Are we building them? Yes, we are. December, February, that's only two months. Oh, and we're almost in January. So yeah, two months to get our engines out uh, and then we'll start building our ships. Um, we are definitely going to want a extra slipway so we can build more than one at a time. Uh, but that will take until July 14. So that's going to take a while. It's fine though. Okay. How's our shipyards doing? Oh no, how's our... Construction factories are almost done. And there they are. And our engines are done as well. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Uh, we have 5% unused instruction. We need more construction factories. So let's go for another 100. Um, still that 5. That's going to take way too long. We'll uh, we want Grand Force Training. I'm actually going to drop that to only 10. Um, and construction factories will jack that up to 15. Oh, 20. There we go. Okay, so the only thing that's actually in the queue are the mines. And April 16 is when we can start producing mines as well. So only four years. 
Um, mining doesn't snowball as much as industry does because mine because the output of mining doesn't have as much impact on the production of mining um in, in construction factories the only ones that really snowball so that's what we're going to do um we have our engines let's start work on our shipyard on, on our ships the question is are we building the darwin or the sydney first um we don't have any we don't have any civilian shipping so we re really do need the the sydney first so we are going to start construction. Uh, we can see that it's going to cost us uh, that much duranium, galcite, boron, macassium, and cobalt. Three hundred fifty-seven build points. We do have the engines, which are a significant, uh, which are a reasonable part of the ship. Uh, but obviously, we can't. Well, we could build a cargo handling system, but that's tiny. It has a cost of ten, and there's only like what two of them. Um, so, cost of twenty. That's very little. That's almost nothing, because our uh, cargo capacity, cargo storage is the thing that's really, really, um, that's the major cost. So we will start work on Sydney one. So our first freighter is on route for 9th of September 12. Uh, and you can see that we save, we're going from October to September. So we're, we've actually only saved about a month, but considering that we're going from end of February to end of October, um, we've still saved a significant portion of how long it would have normally taken us. Um, so, so that's that. Uh, and you can see as well that, uh, because the tonnage is 30,000, it's gone from 420 up to 547. Um, there is math on there. I should probably go find it, but I don't have it on me. So that's neither here nor there. Um, okay. And that is Ba well, that's, that's where I'm gonna, where I'm actually going to cut it because we talked about the main stuff at the moment. Um, in t so we talked about wealth. Uh, we took we've designed a freighter and a colony ship, and we've talked about uh, same yard construction, um, and we've designed some ships that will can do that, which is fine. And we have started construction of our uh, freighter and colony ships. Well, we've decided the order that we're going to build them in um i'm hoping that by the time those uh, those guys are, are constructed our uh, pebble bed reactor will be ready uh, and hopefully we might even have our ion engines ready um, so that's why i'm not building too many of those engines uh, pre-built just yet um but that's that we we are st we've just started work on our naval shipyards so those will come in useful uh, we've re restarted and we've reset another 100 construction factories, uh, maintenance labs, our maintenance facilities will be done in four years, at which point we can start producing mines. I'm going to shift that to 20, actually, just in anticipation. Uh, we've got research labs on the way. Our, sixth, our next research, our first research lab constructed, constructed is only um, 0.37 of a lab away. So that's really, really close. We've got some training facilities on, on the way and we have our academies under construction. So, so far we are not doing too shabby at all. Although, cryo transport we can pre-build. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, let's just throw that on there. How many actual cryo transports do we have? We have 10, I believe. Yeah, we got 10. And that's 74% of the ship. So this thing can be done almost instantly if we pre-build uh, some cryotransports. We're only building 10 of them. Create that. Jack that in. Um, let's drop maintenance facilities by 10 so we can put the cryotransports in. There we go. Uh, how long is that going to take? July thirteen. Yeah, that'll be about that'll be about when we're ready to start building our um, colony ship anyway, because it goes to September, February to September. Yeah, so that's two to nine. That's seven months. Uh, seven plus nine is sixteen. So that's fourth month January. That's April. April, May, June. Okay, we need a little bit more. We need to get it done by the end of April. 
So we are going to shift five out of that. Stick five into there. Is that April? January. Good enough. Okay. Perfect. All right. So uh, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Um, and I will see you in the next one.